I honestly find even and odds one of the most fun topics in all of the GRE and GMAT. And if you don't believe that, hopefully you will by the end of this video. Because the thing about evens and odds is there are very few rules you have to remember. Just a couple of simple concepts and then every question involving evens and odds can be answered with those concepts. What am I talking about? Well, here's a classic evens and odds question. Yusra rolls two dice and records the result of each roll. What is the probability that the product of the two rolls is even? Remember product means multiplying the two results. What is the probability that the product of those two dice rolls is even? Before I get into answering this question, and it's the first of four interesting questions I've created, I want to go over those concepts I told you about involving evens and odds. This is the take home message from this video. First concept, an even times anything is even. Just quickly, as I've written down below, I'm talking about integers because decimals are neither odd nor even. Anyway, even times anything is even. That is the most essential fact you need to know. If you have an even anywhere in a product, the whole thing becomes even. Even if we multiply a hundred different odd numbers together, positive or negative, and then multiply all of that by one even number, that single even number turns the whole thing even. So just remember, anything where there's an even involved in a product, the answer is going to be even. In fact, the second essential fact is that the only way to get an odd product when we talk about integers is an odd times an odd or an odd times an odd times an odd. If everything is odd, the product will be odd. Those are the two most essential facts you need to know about evens and odds. Now, I know some of you are gonna ask me what about adding and subtracting? And honestly, you don't really need to memorize those rules. I am gonna show you them though, but hopefully in a cool way. Not nearly as essential as the first two rules though. Basically, if you're gonna remember about adding and subtracting, if you add two of the same type together, you always get an even. For example, an even plus an even is even, or an odd plus an odd is even. So if you add or subtract two of the same type, you always get an even answer. How do we get an odd answer? If you add or subtract two of different types, for example, an even plus an odd. Let's use these essential facts to answer this particular question. Yusra is gonna roll two dice and multiply the two results. But she wants an even answer. Now, many of you will say, okay, there's three different ways her product could be even. It could be an even times an even, or an even times an odd, or an odd times an even. But we're gonna do it the easier way. And this is honestly the number one shortcut for even and odds question. We're gonna work out the probability that the product is odd. And then once we've worked that out, we just take it away from one to find the probability it's even. And how can the product be odd? How do we end up with an odd product? There's only one way, with an odd result times an odd result. So that's what we're gonna work out. What's the probability that Yusra rolls an odd answer for her first roll? Well, there are three numbers on a dice that are odd, one, three, and five. So it's three out of six, which is a half. And then for her next roll, again, it's a half to get an odd. So getting an odd, then an odd, is a half times a half chance, which equals a quarter. By the way, if you're not so familiar with probability, I've done videos on that, that you can check out. But yes, we're multiplying these results because we want an odd and then an odd. So there's a quarter chance that she ends up with an odd product. Remember, that's the only way she can get an odd product, is an odd times an odd. And if it's a quarter chance of an odd product, can you guys tell me what the chance is of an even product? Well, it's the rest, three quarters. One take away a quarter is three quarters. So there's a quarter chance of an odd product and a three quarters chance of an even product. And so that is the correct answer here, A in this list. And we got it by being very confident with our evens and odds. But we're only just getting started. The next example, is a harder example of an even and odds type of question. And it's gonna look very different to this example. X and Y are integers. If two X plus three Y is an odd integer, 
Which of the following must be odd? Tick all that apply. Well, can you remember the even and odd rules for me? There were four in total, but just the first two, if you remember those, that's the most essential. First is that an even times anything is even. Second, that an odd times an odd is an odd. That's the only way to get an odd product. And the other two rules were, if you add two of the same type, it's always even. So let's apply this logic to this question, starting with the 2x. What will 2 times x, where we don't know what x is, but we know it's an integer, what will 2 times x be in terms of even or odd? It will be even, because the first rule is that an even times anything is even. And 2 is, of course, an even number. So 2x, that part of the expression, is definitely even, giving us the following equation. We have an even, which is 2x, plus 3y equals odd. Why did I turn it into an equation? Because of the word is. It said 2x plus 3y is an odd integer. And is means equals in maths. So 2x plus 3y equals odd. Notice, by the way, that I didn't even write 2x anymore. I just replaced it with the word even. I don't care about the details. I don't care about 2x. I just care that 2x is even. Now, let's go to the addition rule that we know. An even plus something is odd. So what is that something? It must be an even plus an odd to get an odd. Because an even plus an even, as you can see in the top right, gets you an even. So the 3y must be odd. Otherwise, how else do you get an even plus something to equal an odd? So 3y must be odd. 3, don't forget, is an odd number. So we have an odd number times y equals odd. So can you tell me what y is, even or odd? y would be odd. Remember the second essential fact, an odd times an odd gets an odd. So we know that y is an odd number. Isn't that amazing? We deduce this step by step using those cool and essential even and odd rules. Okay, now that we've deduced that y is an odd number, let's go through all of these answers and answer the question. Because remember, the question is, which of the following must be odd? Now that we know y is odd, will y squared definitely be odd? Yes, because y squared, if y is odd, is an odd times itself, an odd times an odd, which will always be odd. That's the second essential rule. What about b, 3y? Is that definitely odd? Yes, because 3 is an odd number. So an odd times y, which is odd, equals odd. What about 3x? We don't know about 3x, so that wouldn't be one of the ones that we tick. Some of you might have said, oh, we know x is even. We actually don't know if x is even. x might be even or odd. We have no idea. But we know it's an odd times x, which we don't know what it is. And so we don't know whether it's going to be even or odd. So we wouldn't take that. d is x squared. But again, we don't know what x is. So it could be an even times an even, which is even, or an odd times an odd, which is odd. So we don't take that. Finally, x plus y. Some of you may have ticked that if you thought that x was definitely even, but we don't actually know anything about x, so we wouldn't tick e either. x plus y is an unknown plus an odd, which is unknown because we don't know about x. So you might well agree that this was a very different type of question to the first one. And the third question in this video is going to be different yet again. I hope you're beginning to really enjoy even and odds, just like I do. I find them so fun, kind of simple in a way, but also cute and easy to do once you know the trick. Okay, third question. P, Q, R, and S are consecutive odd numbers such that P is greater than Q, which is greater than R, which is greater than S. Which of the following statements must be true? Tick all that apply. P, Q, S must be odd. P plus Q plus R minus S must be odd p times q plus s must be even. By the way, of course, any time you can pause yourself to work it out and see if it chimes in with what I say. I included this example because I find even and odd questions particularly susceptible to picking numbers. And I didn't want this video to go by without making that point. If you see an even and odd question, the chances are greater than 50-50 that you can just solve it by picking numbers. So that's what I'm going to do here. They said that they were consecutive odd numbers with P being the biggest. So I picked 
seven, five, three, and one. Those are four consecutive odd numbers. And using those four numbers, we can easily judge whether each of the statements must be true. Remember, P is seven, Q is five, R is three, and S is one. But you could have picked different numbers and you still get the right answer. PQS must be odd. Is it true that PQS must be odd? Well, putting in our numbers, P is seven, Q is five, and S is one. Seven times five times one is 35. So yes, it must be odd. That reminds me of something I really want you to know. The brilliant thing about even and odd questions when you pick numbers is that you don't have to pick a second set of numbers because what is true for one set of evens and odds will be true for all even and odds. That's brilliant. With other topics, by the way, you pick one example and then you have to pick a very different example to check out whether it's true in all circumstances. But an even plus an even, for example, will always be even. It's not like you have to check different evens. It's true for one, therefore it's true for all. Therefore here, we're certain that the answer will be odd. So statement one is true. Second one, same thing, plug in our numbers. The result is 14. So this is not true. It must be even, not must be odd for B. And finally, for the third one, plugging in our numbers, we get 36. And again, that's even. So that one is true. Because remember, with C it said, PQ plus S must be even. And we do get an even answer, 36. So answers A and C are the ones that we would tick. So I'm really glad I got that point across that even and odd questions are particularly susceptible to picking numbers. And you don't have to pick multiple sets of numbers because what's true for one set of evens and odds is true for all of them. Okay, final question. Do you wanna try this one yourself? Pause the video and see what you get. Okay, ending on a good one. The product of the positive integers w, x, y, and z is even. And the product of w, x, and y is odd. Which of the following must be true? There's one key thing you've got to realize here. You see in the second half of the first sentence, it said the product of w, x, and y is odd. You should know by now that that will only occur in one scenario if we're dealing with integers. What's the scenario where you get an odd product? The scenario is if all of them are odd. So when it says w, x, and y, the product is odd, that means we know w and x and y are all odd numbers. And some of you will be looking at the first part of the sentence and being like, well, how is it that w, x, y, and z, the product is even? Well, the letter that didn't appear in the second half, which is z, that must be the mysterious culprit. z must be the number that's turning the product even. Let's quickly recap that logic. It said the product of w, x, and y is odd. That means if they're integers, which they are, that w, x, and y are all odd. And therefore, the only way that w, x, y, and z is even, the product, is if z, that extra letter, was even. And all it takes is a single even, remember, in a product to make the whole product even. So we know for sure that w, x, and y are all odd, and that z is even. So let's now answer the questions based on that knowledge. It weirdly seems to be about remainders, that's strange. Well, it really isn't that bad. Statement one is, the remainder when z is divided by two is zero. That just means, does two go into z? If the remainder when you divide it by two is zero, that means that two is a factor of z. And we know it is because z must be even, and all even numbers can be divided by two with no remainder. So the first statement is definitely true. I know it's kind of weird language, but it's easy once you know what they're asking. The remainder when x, y is divided by two is one. What numbers, when you divide them by two, give you a remainder of one? I know that's kind of a weird question, but can you think of any number or any type of number where when you divide it by two, the remainder is one. All odd numbers, that's what I'm looking for. Any odd number, when you divide it by two, the remainder will be one. So what statement two is actually asking is, is x, y, the product, odd? 
And we know it is because we know x and y are both odd. So an odd times an odd is odd. And so the remainder will be one. So statement two is also true. Finally, the remainder when w, z is divided by two is one. That's their question. So again, they're asking you, is the product w, z odd? Because it's only odd numbers which have a remainder of one when you divide it by two. But this time the answer is no. Why? Because we know that z is even. And an even times an odd will be even. And so this would not be a correct answer. I hope this tour of evens and odds have convinced you that it's a fun topic with a few simple rules at its heart and shown you the different ways that they can ask you even and odd style questions. Have a wonderful day.